Welcome to SUSECON Digital 2022. Uh, this is session tutorial 1307. Um, we'll be setting up uh, SUSE Rancher with real certificates. My name is Dwayne Sims, and I'll be uh, your host on this journey uh, that I've been on, uh, and hopefully you'll learn something uh, the way that I did uh, along the way. Uh, so just a quick look at the agenda of today's topic. Uh, we'll be looking at what the real issue is here. Uh, we'll be installing uh, Rancher with real certs in mind. Um, we will be taking a look at acme.sh, which is this wonderful open source script um, that helps you uh, uh, interface with the, uh, the certificate authorities. Um, we'll look at how we can uh, change our DNS uh, to be able to get that certificate back uh, and uh, available to install into your system. Uh, and then we'll, we'll look at about adding the secret to Kubernetes, the Kubernetes cluster that Rancher server is actually running on. And then we'll test our connection and uh, see how that looks. So without any further ado, we'll kind of jump right in. Um, my, again, my name is Dwayne Sims. Uh, I'm a sales engineer in the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, I've been with SUSE just about four years. So what is the real issue here? Um, uh, well, I'm always making messes for myself and I have to figure out how to get myself out of them. Um, but to, to sort of start this all off, um, almost all applications today require SSL connections with HTTPS. And as you know, it, when you're setting these things up, you can usually set things up with self-signed certificates. And for the most part, they're a pain because once you get them set up um, and you get them installed, then you get into some, looking at something like this. Whenever you go to connect, you get this, your connection's not private. You have to click advanced and you have to go to, um, you know, go through a, an override process to make uh, the application work. And then you're always staring up there in the corner at the, it's not secure and all these things, just because we're not, you don't have that root certificate uh, authority in your browser. Uh, so the browser is always questioning whether or not this is a good connection or not. So uh, totally understandable, but it, it, it is it is painful. Um, well, to make matters even worse, um, I have been working at setting up this laptop so I can get prepared to go back out on the road again once we get back to traveling some more. And um, my host name is called Kanoa, um, which is a river in West Virginia, by the way. And uh, um, I got very clever and went out and registered the domain name Kanoa.dev. And I thought, well, it'll be great. All the stuff that I have on board my laptop, I can use the Kanoa.dev um, uh, domain for, for all those hosts, for all those virtual hosts that I was set up. And I was just so proud of myself. But little did I know that all, there's almost no browsers of, around today that will allow you to connect to a .dev website with a self-signed cert. When, when you actually go to connect, you get this thing blocking you completely uh, from being able to connect to that self-signed certificate. Um, and I was just like, wow, this is not going to work. I've got to come up with something here to make, make this go better. And it was either go and find another domain or figure out how to use a real cert. And that's what I actually chose, was to go out and actually incorporate a real SSL certificate into my rancher server. I didn't know how to do this. I knew there were documentation around. Uh, but I had to go and educate myself first. And hopefully my educating myself, I, I can help you out as well. So our next step is actually installing Rancher uh, with real certs in mind. And, and um, uh, there are many ways to install Rancher. Uh, one thing this presentation is not is a presentation on Rancher, in, Rancher installation. I, I, I'm not going to try to cover all the various ways that you could go through installing Rancher. Uh, I would urge you to go read the Rancher documentation on that. I've supplied the link there for you if you want to go take a look at that documentation. Uh, and you'll see in that documentation, it says to install uh, whenever you're when installing Rancher and you're going to use real certs that you want to install, uh, use the certificates from files methodology. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And the, the, the key to that is this option right here, which is set ingress.tls.source equals secret. And the secret actually refers to a Kubernetes secret. And this is the actual command that I actually ran on my uh, virtual machine to install Rancher. 
that I was going to do uh, for to 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 get these uh, um, real certificates installed. And you'll notice there I set my host name to angus.canola.dev, uh, and I set a Bootstrap password to go along with that. And again, this last piece here, this ingress.tls.source equals secret. So that's the that's the methodology you want to use. So moving on, um, we're going to talk about Acme.sh. Uh, Acme.sh is absolutely going to be your friend in this process. Um, Acme.sh is a script, an open source script that you can pull off of GitHub. Um, Acme in this case stands for Automated Certificate Management Environment. I always wonder what that meant. Uh, I, I was thinking, always think about the Acme uh, references to the Roadrunner, but uh, uh, in this case, it's an acronym, Automated Certificate Management Environment, so aptly named. Um, by default, the script's going to now assume that you're going to use 0ssl.com as your certificate authority. Uh, it used to use Let's Encrypt, and, that, and you can still use Let's Encrypt if you want to. You just have to add some, some different um, uh, flags to the, to the command to do that. I decided to go ahead and just use the default. It, it seemed like it would be okay, and it turned out to be okay. So I, I, I didn't have any issue there at all. Uh, one of the things you want to do is expand the script out from your, the zip file that you would download from, uh, from GitHub. Um, and then the very first thing you're going to do is register your email address with the CA. So the, the kind of uh, your first handshake. Well, where should you do this at? That's another good, uh, good question to ask yourself. Um, you want to do this on a system that's connected to the internet and, and can get to uh, um, the uh, the domain registering systems, the, the, the CA easily. Um, so it might not be on the system that you're running Rancher or you intend to run Rancher on. You, I, I just use my laptop to do this and that seemed to work just fine. So I would say typically you would want to run this on, on some Linux system that's connected to the internet. I have a, a, a Leap 15.3 system that I'm running on and that seemed to work just fine uh, for this script. Um, so the very next thing you're going to do is you're going to communicate with the certificate authority. Um, and in my case, I registered a wildcard domain. I was thinking maybe I would want to have more than one rancher system. And so having actually a wildcard certificate would be nice. So I could plug in whatever host name and I wanted to do with that. Um, as a part of this whole process, as we go through, you're going to have to make some edits to your DNS configuration. And then that does not mean your local DNS configuration. I actually run local DNS here at my home office on a Raspberry Pi. And so it's not that local DNS configuration that you're talking about. It's probably going to be the one where you actually registered your domain with. In my case, that's domains.google.com. And we'll take a look in the next section on how you make those kind of edits and what you want to add there. So this is the command that you're going to run. It's acme.ssh or acme.sh dash issue. Uh, and you'll see here it's star.kanoa.dev. That's the wildcard piece of this. Um, and then the the sort of the thing on the end here, yes, I know DNS manual mode enough, go ahead, please. Um, because the script actually assumes a lot of different things. And so we're actually using it in a very specific way to put something into Rancher. So this is the process that we want to use. And you'll see that the information that you get back from Acme.sh, once it communicates with the CA uh, for your for your wildcard dev, uh, comes back this way. And the text value that you're really concerned about is this nasty little long string that's right here. Um, that's the that's that piece of information you're going to want to grab, and the the subdomain that you're talking to, and that's that's underscore Acme Challenge .dev. And this is the part we're going to have to go back in and actually stick in the DNS records. Um, this is kind of like a, um, almost like a, a password challenge that, that Acme.sh has to go through before the CA can actually um, issue you, your, the certificate to you. So now we need to go make some changes to our DNS configuration and actually get our certificate back. So let's, let's go take a look at how we do that. Now, again, you're going to go to probably the place where you actually registered your domain at. That's probably the best place to do this at. And so I actually went out to, in my case, I, since I registered my domain with Google Domains, this is where I went and added this custom record. And if you look here, the custom record that I added was acmechallenge.kanoa.dev. And 
the data for that is going to be that string that we got back from acme.sh. So this is this is added to the to the to the DNS uh, database basically. And then when we actually go through the process of running acme.sh one more time, this time with the renew flag turned on, we're going to get back. We're going to get that communication between the CA and the the uh, the DNS registration. So it'll actually be able to register that and then issue us a certificate. If you look down here, you can see where that certificate was actually issued here, begin certificate, end certificate. I didn't include all that text here in this uh, um, in the in the the presentation, but it's a big block of text that you're going to get back, that that is the actual cert that you're getting back from the CA. Now, I also want to point out, if you get a lot of timeouts, if you run the acme.sh dash dash renew with the, with, with the, uh, the flags and everything, um, and you get a lot of, and you get a lot of timeouts, you get this processing, the CA is processing your order, please just wait. If you get more than one or two of those, something is wrong because you're not actually getting that, that communication. Now, that means one of two things probably. One, you didn't give enough time between when you went and edited the, the information that you're in, in DNS to propagate. So it takes a, maybe a minute or two for that information to get propagated out so that whenever the CA is actually doing that query back to the to, to, to the DNS system, he's actually getting that, um, that string. So he knows that you are who you say you are and can, and should be getting this certificate. But, um, in the case, the other case could be, you just edited it wrong. Now, not that that ever happened to me, but yeah, maybe it did once or twice. Uh, I didn't get it quite right the first time. I think the first time I actually wound up and I wound up with the star dot dev and the thing instead of it should it should have been um, that 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 whole string it was specified uh, up a couple of panels ago. So um, just make sure that you get that editing done right, and and uh, th then you shouldn't you shouldn't see this uh, um, the, the CA is processing your order over and over and over again. So I just want to point that out that that if you might run into a trouble with that. So now we're moving into the home stretch here. We're really on the last step. So we need to add that certificate and a secret uh, into the Kubernetes cluster that Rancher server is running on. Uh, this is a little bit harder with wildcards um, because I get a file name back that's got a, a wildcard character in it. Um, there's two files we're going to get back from acme.sh. One is this fullchain.sir file, uh, and the other is this uh, key, the actual key file. And um, that, that's the, the really important piece that we need here. Um, but it's got a, a, a star in the file name. And uh, um, as you probably know, when you're dealing with Bash, having wildcard characters and file names just makes things very difficult. So the very first thing I did was I copied that file to a, another file. Um, so I, I escaped that star. Uh, .kanoa.dev.key, and I copied it to a file name called wild.kanoa.dev.key. Much easier for me to deal with there. So what I then did was I used SCP, and I copied both of those files, the wild.kanoa.dev.key and the fullchain.sir file over to the system where um, I'm running Rancher at. Now, in my case, I'm just running on a single server. If, if you were running on a larger cluster, if you had Rancher running on a, a three or five node cluster, you would want to copy it to one of your control nodes where you can run kubectl. The next step really is, is to install uh, the secret. And before you install the secret, it's a good idea to look to see if it's already there. If you look, if you do the kubectl command, you can actually do a get and look in the in the cattle dot dash system namespace look at your secrets see if you've got a secret there that's called tls dash rancher dash ingress if you don't have one of those and you shouldn't if it's the first time you've went through this you shouldn't have one you can just proceed if you already have one that probably means you're getting ready to do a renewal and so you would want to go ahead and delete that secret out of rancher before you proceed so if you look there I've actually included the delete command that you would want to execute if you need to pull that that um, that uh, secret out. But that's the process that you would go through. In my case, I didn't have one, so I would go ahead 
and get ready to install the secret. And this is the kubectl command I would issue. Uh, it's kubectl uh, namespace cattle dash system. We're going to create a secret. Um, we've got the whole uh, whole command there for you. Good to stick on that last piece, which is insecure skip TLS verify at the end um, and issue that and you'll get that uh, completed command to come back. And then the next thing you want to do um, is to check and see um, if you have that certificate installed. And as you can see here, we do have that now. We have a TLS-rancher.ingress uh, that's installed as a secret, and we should be able to proceed from here. So our final step is actually going out and testing the connection. This is uh, the, the anticlimactic piece of it here. You should be in business. You should be able to point yourself direct your browser right at your um, the, the name of your server. Um, in my case, it's angus.kanoa.dev. That's the K3S server uh, where Rancher is actually running at. Um, and I connect right up. I don't have to go through any, any kind of uh, overrides or anything like that. And I've got a real certificate. I've got my little, uh, my little uh, lock there that looks good. And I, and I have a, a good certificate installed um, and, and uh, all is kind of well. And, 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 I, and it works nicely. And I can actually use Rancher uh, uh, easily to, to, uh, for demonstration purposes, lab purposes, whatever I need to do. Um, so what, what happens next? What, what, what am I going to work on next with this whole process? Well, one thing, um, the method works really well. It's not hard once you've done it once or twice. Um, you can go through it pretty quickly and pretty easily. Um, but the renewal process, the renewal updates are a pain. And um, with Acme.sh, you should be able to do renewals very easily. It's just that actually installing them back through Kubernetes is really not part of Acme.sh, at least that I can figure out so far. So um, I'm having to do my updates manually every 90 days. But again, it's not so bad that once I've got it figured out. Um, but uh, I would really like to be able to take advantage of automatic renewals. And so there's probably a way of doing this. I just haven't quite figured it out yet. So that's where I'm actually moving to. Um, um, th that is the, 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 uh, the biggest thing that I see on the horizon I would like to fix. Also, uh, probably getting the certs extended for a whole year or more would probably be a ne next step. Now, I think once you do that, you actually have to pay for them. I think it's the fact that you're getting the, the, um, the free certs are, are, are 90 days. And if you want to get longer, longer live certs, you've got to go through the process of actually paying for them. So for my lab purposes and for my demo purposes, I'm probably not going to do that. But that is that is something that we that that we could certainly take a look at. Um, some useful links um, as you as you go through this process. Um, again, there that that first link there is a, is the link for the rancher documentation. I urge you to go take a look at that. I also found a really good article out there on on this Franken Dev uh, site. Uh, that talked about um, using the free wildcards from Zero SSL uh, with Acme.sh. It was a really nice resource there, and I used that as I was going through the process to, to try to educate myself on what was actually happening. Um, but I would urge you to take a look at that as well. It was very useful. And then, again, the next link is for the Acme.sh a script and and go and I I wouldn't know how to do it any other way at this point uh, of doing this, but Acme.sh was just wonderful and worked really well. So a, a great piece of open source software. Um, uh, also, the, and for my situation where I couldn't actually connect uh, to a, a, a dot a dev uh, um, a domain. Um, there's an article out there on the register that talks about this a little bit. So that's where I sort of learned what what was actually happening to me and how I got into it got into the mess that I got into. So um, if, if, just for fun, you might want to take a look at that as well. Well, so that it really concludes my talk. I, I really appreciate your time today and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.